Today's episode of Shift Happens is a shift from being polished to being very raw. And yesterday when I went to see my oncologist, I was so excited to hear my Oncotype test results and we don't have them back yet. So I basically got a dose of here's your pathology from when the tumor was removed. Well, I've already seen that report. I've already met with my breast surgeon. So in all honesty, I was a little frustrated. I'm a quality time person and I like to maximize the minutes. I also don't want to waste money on a doctor's appointment that tells me something I can read on a paper. Remember the days when you'd go to college class and the professor would be preaching the textbook you just read and you realized I'm either going to not read the text or and come to class or I'm going to read the text, study on my own ditch class, show up for the exam and ace it. It felt a little like that. In all honesty, I was frustrated and I on I had done a really great job of compartmentalizing that special day and enjoying what I call vacation vibes. I love living in the country and having that vacation vibe feel each and every day when I wake and when I sleep and finding peace is, has been just an amazing journey. And, um, so I was absolutely exhausted. Turns out after opening that box and letting re all those emotions release, I was very tired. So the good news is I let myself sleep and I got a good 10 hours of sleep last night and I did some reading before bed. I'm a disruptor. So that means I challenge the status quo. I think critically, I think creatively. One of the things that I learned in my journey of becoming a leader and training in leadership is how to think. One of the things that sets the greatest leaders apart is how they think. And so as a systems dynamicist, I learned some of the tools that help elevate our thinking. So I go to the appointment, right? There's the experience. I check in, I filled out all the paperwork online. I love the efficiencies of that. Get in there and I'm told that because I had a lumpectomy, I have to have radiation. That always follows a lumpectomy. And I get it, right? Like you could, this comes back to critical thinking and knowledge of people, right? So I was there with a neighbor who um, also recently survived cancer, a different type. However, she wishes that she had known she didn't have to just blindly follow what they said. And I said, oh, honey, you're preaching my language. I don't follow suit. I didn't just go get married and build a house with a white picket fence like everybody else. I didn't you know, have my child in wedlock like everybody else. So I've always been a little out of the box, truth be told. And like it or not, I live with it, right? Um, I've always told myself I'll be single over settle. There's just certain things that life has brought my way as challenges and I've overcome them. And now I'm sitting right in the middle of this one and it feels big. I'm afraid to abandon what might be quote best practice in the medical profession. Yet what I've learned in leadership I learned this from one of the world's leading behavioral analysts. He said, why do people get frustrated with politicians? You got to just know who they are, right? You expect a politician to behave like the kind of personality that would be helping people. Those personalities went into, they joined the Red Cross. They joined the fire department, the police department, nursing, teaching. Politicians have some I can't remember if it was uh, like psychopath tendency or, but definitely egomaniac. They're there for their ego for power. So don't confuse the two. And I remember in, I remember telling my neighbor yesterday, I said, you know, medical doctors, we have to know who they are, right? They're a little bit of the, they're scholars. They went to school for long periods of time. They like to know the answers. So when you have a hammer, everything's a nail, right? Every breast cancer patient is a nail. And you go and you hammer radiation, radiation, radiation. And I read something last night about how there is some long-term chronic effects of these treatments. And I guess as I look back, I've been scared of this chapter of the journey. I've been scared of chemo. That word kind of makes me a little shaky and want to cry. Um, and I was told early on, because of the type of tumor you have, you're going to have to have it. And initially I was worried about losing my hair. Now I'm like, I'll get some cute wigs. We'll go live with all kinds of hairdos. I'll make, I'm the queen of making the best out of difficult situations. So life has taught me that and I can hang on to the good. I want you to look back at your life and think of all the things you've overcome and to celebrate the fact that baby today you're undefeated. 
So I am actually so excited. I'm going to a little coffee shop to give myself a retreat. I've got my stack of books. I've got my laptop. I'm redoing my, um, my website and refining my business as things become really clear. I've had a lot of clarity over the past two weeks while I haven't been work, while I've been focused on healing and relaxation and I haven't been worried about a lot of this. So I'm just here making requests because I know that when we put good thoughts into the universe together, we amazing things happen. I want you to read the book Mind to Matter or at least skim it. I've met a lot of people who say I don't read. I'm like, wow, you're missing out, man. There's so much good information in the world that you're missing out on. Um, knowledge is power, my friends, if you act on it, right? Knowledge should lead you to growth should you choose to actually implement and behave differently because of the knowledge, right? Some people just gain knowledge and they do nothing with it. They continue the patterns of behavior that got them to where they are today and that's why they plateau. We're talking about rising, up-leveling. So I'm here to make a big prayer request today and that you pray for clarity in this journey. I've got a stubborn Irish spirit and I'm a bit of a disruptor. I like challenging the status quo. I like seeing the world evolve. And um, I really love being a human and seeing the best in all people from all walks of life all over the world. And I know that's not a traditional, typical mindset, right? I escape the status quo in a lot of ways of thinking and I, I find joy in that. Um, and so part of me wants to escape the status quo and say, I feel amazing. I'm more disciplined than most people. I have been studying foods and its effect on the body since I turned to my conscious cleanse book. I thought it was 2015. My little pledge that I had to sign and date in that book said 2014. So it's been a journey. I've had, you know, I'm on my ninth year with health. All those baby steps have led to accumulation of strength. There is absolutely nothing that tastes as good as cancer feels, period, hard stop. So I've reframed my thinking around food completely. I made it through the holidays without indulging in any sweet treats. It turns out it was just fine. I didn't have the inflammation that sugar brings to the belly. I slept better. So I'm able to see the bright side amidst a shitstorm, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm willing and able to do all of that. And I get that the medical field has to navigate what's best for most. So anytime I hear, we always, and every time I thought, mm, that doesn't sit well with me because my body and behavior is unique in a lot of ways. Yes, there's patterns and trends, right? I'm a scholar too, I love research and I love meta-analysis. I love seeing what trends exist. So I just pray for clarity and for the right information to cross my desk so that I can make an informed decision. And I love you all, this is gonna be the hard chapter was the other part was a little bit hard emotionally roller coaster mastectomy chemo lumpectomy genetic test results all these crazy things um and it, it was a little bit of an emotional journey but this one this is where there's some long-term consequences to the decision that i make and chronic chronic effects that come from being an ill nation focused on prescriptions and so with that, I ask for your prayers, sending you loads of love and light and joy.